Hello everyone, this is Laura. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'll be talking about the second half of my friend's trip and specifically about shopping. I am thinking about doing another video on my dining experiences and also the hotels I stayed at because I've had some pretty interesting encounters and good stories to tell. But for today, it will just be about shopping. And if you watch my previous video, you would know that I was in Cannes and Central Pay before going to Paris. And in each of the cities, I did drop by boutique stores just to see their availability and I will touch upon that today as well. Besides Hermes, I also shopped at Louis Vuitton, Celine, Goyard, and Chanel. Let me just start off by saying shopping in Paris sucks. I know that's a bit unexpected, but that's been my experience this summer. To sum it up, most of the popular styles are sold out and there are long ways outside the store. So unless you have sales associates who you already work with and can get in touch with, it is nearly impossible to find the popular styles. Um, don't get me wrong, the prices are good. It's just you might not be able to find what you're looking for. And with that said, I'll start off by sharing some of my Chanel purchases. So I read online that Chanel in Paris now takes appointments and knowing that it's really hot in the summer, as soon as I planned my trip, I went to the website to try to get an appointment because first of all, I don't want to waste my time and definitely I do not want to wait in like a 90 degree weather. So one tip is that you have to go to the Chanel French website and once you're on the website, just right click Google Translate and you'll be able to make your appointment from there. Chanel does have a policy where they only allow one appointment per day per profile. One way to bypass that is if you have another email, you could make multiple appointments at different stores, but with one email, you only get one appointment. And like most people, I was trying to get an appointment at the Rue Cambon store. I believe I checked the website three weeks prior to my trip and the Rue Cambon store was completely booked out already. Uh, luckily for me, I do have a friend who was in Paris a week prior to me and she had a sales associate there and she was able to introduce me to him and the sales at the Rue Cambon store was able to arrange an appointment for me. I'm really excited about this connect because I know the stock levels are pretty low in Europe. I was hoping that the salesperson might be able to hold or source items for me. So as soon as I got in touch with him, I did send him like a wish list. And I think my wish list included a Chanel denim bucket hat, then a mini flap, mini flap like other color. As I've already purchased a lot of Chanel items this year, there really wasn't that many things I was after. I was kind of in the mindset where I would just go in and browse. Before I dive into the details of my Rue Cambon trip, I would also like to talk about visit to the Can store and the Central Pay store. Can store was fairly small. The stock was pretty low. When we went, the stores were pretty empty. I, I think it's due to the fact that they just don't really have that much items. For your central play, I highly recommend you paying a visit even if you're not trying to buy anything. The store is just absolutely stunning. From the outside, it looks like a mansion. It has a main structure where they have ready-to-wear handbags, accessories. The shoe section is behind the main house. And as you walk out, it looks like a backyard with a pool and where the guest house is is where they have the shoe section. I would say the store mainly focuses on ready to wear. They really didn't have that much um, handbags or other accessories. However, I did walk away with two pairs of Chanel earrings. I'll show you all my Chanel purchases all at the end. Oh, and one thing to note is that pictures are actually not allowed in the store, but I took photos before you know someone let me know their policies. That's why I had these photos. But interesting thing is that the store is only open from I think April to September or October. It's so they're only open half of the year. Hours are only from ten or eleven to five or six. But they do have like a two or three hour lunch break. So if you get the chance, do visit the store. And now on to the Rue Cambon visit. So I would say my first two Chanel visits at the Cannes store and the Saint-Tropez store was 
a bit of a failure because I didn't really find the bags or shoes that I'm looking for. I decided about my room Kimbon visit. So besides the obvious fact that it's the mothership of Chanel, another reason is because I did convey to the sales associate ahead of time of the items I wanted. And he did tell me that if any of those items become available, he will be able to hold it for me. So I had high hopes going to the appointment, but unfortunately he did not have any of the things I wanted. Really into Chanel mini flaps lately. I want them in all kinds of colors. Obviously something I inquired about during my visit and they did not have any. Um, my girlfriend who was in Europe for a month, she said she visited Chanel stores in Amsterdam and Milan and none of these stores have mini flaps. That is how difficult it is to get a mini flap nowadays. You know, I was a little sad at the store and got into my own head that I had to get something. I mean, I was in Paris, I was in the Rue Cambon store and the euro is so cheap. I just told myself that I had to get something even though right off the bat I didn't really see anything I liked. I was just browsing through, looking through some items and I saw this thing that caught my eye. And I will just show you guys what it is. So most Chanel fans know only the Rue Cambon store has this white packaging. I did already wear this out so it's not in a dust bag anymore, but this little cutie is what I picked up in Paris. It is a little vanity bag that doesn't really hold that much. It comes with a chain and I'm 5'6". The chain length is perfect for me. It's not adjustable, but on its own, it, it's for my height. This is part of the new 22B collection. While I was looking through the lookbook when the collection was released, this item actually didn't catch my attention at all, but I was searching really hard to buy something at the store and this is what I ended up with. It was this other 22B vanity that I really wanted and I wasn't really expecting this item to be so hard to find because it is a seasonal piece and there's not that much buzz around it. And I thought it would just be readily available in Paris, but it wasn't. I checked all three stores, they told me it was all sold out. He told me he could source it, but it would take a week and I didn't have that much time. So this is what I ended up going with. So this cutie is patent leather. So something about me is that I don't really like regular leathers that much. I like patent, uh, iridescent, especially for Chanel. So this tiny vanity does not hold a phone. I had the regular size 13 and it does not fit. The inside of the bag is lined with pink leather. It has this uh, elastic pocket, which could hold your card holder. It has a lipstick slot. And the depth of this section is actually quite shallow. So you really wouldn't be able to fit that much. I've carried this bag twice out already. The most I could fit there was a car key, a car holder, um, that's about it. And <laughs> the back of the bag actually have card slots. I guess if you don't carry the actual card holder and you just put bare cards in there, it could work. You could potentially hold a lot more things. The way I've been wearing it is I would just put the chain in the back pocket and um, hand hold it. This bag has definitely grown on me. Well, after coming back to the States, I did ask my sales about this vanity I was looking for. She did have it in stock, but the more I looked at it and compared to this one, I actually prefer this one now. Nowadays, buying Chanel in Europe is no longer as good of a deal as before, just because Chanel has harmonized its global pricing. So compared to other brands, you're not gonna get that much discount. So for this bag specifically, I bought this in Europe for 31, 100 euros so with the bad refund it comes out to maybe around 2700 which is a really good deal for a chanel bag so if memory serves me right i think this bag goes for 31.95 or 31.75 plus tax that would be around 3500 so i'm saving about 700 dollars on this bag which is a good deal um, so I'm really happy with this purchase now that I 
bought it, I actually appreciate it and cherish it a lot more than I did at the store when I first saw it. Off to the earrings I bought. So I did purchase two at a Chanel inside a department store, which I'll talk about later in this video. And two pairs in the Central Pay store. And another thing with Chanel is that they do have a policy limit where you can only buy four pairs of earrings. I bought five because my friend bought one for me under her profile. So I will just show you guys real quick. I don't really remember the pricing, but I think for each earring, I save around $100, you know, considering that refund and US sales tax. I got this like super cute stud. I have not seen this anywhere, so I'm not really sure which collection is from. And one thing is that when after you pay, they take out the tag. I, I don't remember which collection this is from. It has like straws, uh, crystal embellished, very sparkly. I love it. Next, these were from earlier this year. It was like completely sold out when it first came out. I don't know how I came across these, but this was purchased at the San Trope store. These are also really, really cute. And as you watch more of my videos, you will know that I'm a huge Chanel earring fan. I have so many of them. That's why I, you know, bought so many pairs. And another one is these Chanel studs with flowers. And this is from, I think, the previous collection. Not 22B, but the one before. Let's see. Ooh. And this one is one of the reissues. This is from... I think a while back, but I have seen these in the store here and there. I have no idea if they're part of the permanent collection, but usually with these now on the tag, you will see uh, REV. I'm not sure what that means, but probably just like reissues of the first edition. Last but not least, These are probably my favorite so far. I think these are part of the 22B collection, are by far my favorite out of these five earrings. So I have worn this several times already. It's very chic and cool, and I never really expected to like it this much just because um, it is quite small. But after putting them on, I just found love. So that concludes my Chanel purchase. Like I said, um, they didn't really have any of the good items. If you look on the shelf, you can always see like a lot of items on display, but it's usually the same bag. They would have like 20 of them on display. One of the bags I saw the most was the new Chanel flap that has the heart chain. I don't think they were a good seller for this collection because I saw them pretty much at every single store. And one thing I found really annoying in France was that a lot of the stores will have these pieces that you really want, but when you go ask for them, it will tell you it's for display only. It's not just Hermes, not just Chanel, but even Remoa. It wasn't even on the display window, it was like display on the inside of the store. Even then they couldn't like give it to you. They would just tell you, oh sorry, it's on display, you can't buy it. As a side note, I really wanted to buy a Remoa trunk this trip and I just couldn't find any. I think the only way for you to get it is if you're the first person at the Remoa store. And my friend was there before me and she told me that in order to get it, you have to be the first one. And they only stock like seven units a day. So unless you're the first two or three person, you're not gonna get anything. There was one time when I was in a department store, I saw these Remoas just like on the floor. And I was so excited, I ran to them, I was like, Oh, can I take that one? I really like it. And he's like, no, sorry, that's on display. And as he checked his inventory list, it seemed like they have more items on display than in stock. It's just kind of crazy because it's a luggage. Like, why do you need them on display? Why can't you just sell me what you have? So unfortunately, I couldn't find anything. And that was like one thing I was kind of annoyed about. But I guess French people have their standards and they just really prioritize the aesthetics of the store over making money. <laughs> okay, and off next, 
But in Paris, I also went to the Goyard store. I bought three items there. I don't really have any to show you because I bought them for my sister and I already gave it to her. So I can just give you a brief summary of the whole process. So the Goyard store is a very small store and I think they have maybe eight salesperson helping you at once. When I got there, the line seemed pretty short. There was only six people in front of me, but the wait took about an hour. And once I was in the store, most of the things I wanted, they didn't have. I really wanted this Goyard wallet. It was completely sold out. I wanted an Alpine backpack. I think they only had it in green and this magenta color, which I didn't like. And I wanted a collar for my cat, but it was sold at this store across the street and it wasn't open until three. I wasn't about to wait another time. So I didn't end up buying the collar. The things I did end up buying were passport holder, a like pouch and a Saint-Pierre wallet. And in terms of pricing, I don't really know how much these three items cost. So I have no comparison, but I did buy an Alpine mini backpack for my sister here in the States back in April. And I think it cost around 3,600. And this time when I asked, and mind you, it was after a recent price increase, it is 26 something. So the saving is huge. Like on the backpack alone, I would have saved a thousand dollars um, just on retail price. And then if you factor in refund and sales tax, it's even more. So I definitely, Highly recommend you going if you're a Goyard fan, but do go early because the line does take a while. I did ask the salesperson about making an appointment in the future. So interestingly, their salespeople do not have any phone numbers or emails. So there's no way for you to you know, get in touch with the salesperson ahead of time. She did mention that you are able to make appointments online and she recommended me doing so two weeks prior to my visit. I'm gonna try that next time. So that's a tip for you guys. Last but not least, I wanna talk about Louis Vuitton. And with this brand, you definitely get the most savings out of all the brands I shopped at. It, it's ridiculous. I think in general, I think I saved around 40% per item. And I personally am not a Louis Vuitton fan. Uh, for myself, I only purchased this hat. I think this hat is like, 11 or 1200 in the US, but I got it for like 700 something. I can't really try it on right now just because I have my hair tied up. But um, here is a photo of how it looked when I did wear it. Um, this is a very pretty hat. At the store, I was a little bit on the fence about it. It was quite expensive for a Louis Vuitton hat even in France. Louis Vuitton hat that I really wanted was the denim bucket hat. Bucket hat was completely sold out in all of Paris, and this was probably the next best thing. Um, I kind of justify it the purchase by saying that I'd take out the scarf and swap it out to make it more worth it. But unfortunately, this is actually sewn on. I guess I could just cut the thread too if I wanted to, but I think I'll get my wear out of the hat before I go and destroy things. After coming back to the States, I didn't realize that I could actually just buy a straw hat and put a Louis Vuitton or like an Hermes Twilly on it. I didn't really have to spend that much money on a hat. So I feel like I kind of overpaid, but you know, at the end of the day, I still saved a lot because of the European pricing. So I would still say I'm very happy with this purchase. Last thing I bought myself is a Louis Vuitton necklace did buy this at the Louis Vuitton or in the airport. So I saved even more because what happens is I think the French VAT is actually around 20%, but after the refund agency's processing fee, they say you get back 15%, but they also take money when they debit your bank account. So you only get back around 10%. 
And if you were to buy these at the airport, the VAT won't even be added. So go to get the 20% saving. And one neat thing is if you have Louis Vuitton salesperson's contact, they could actually source things for you. The only thing is you will have to pay ahead of time with the full price that included. But once you're at the airport, they could process a refund and you can rebuy it with the VAT fully deducted, which is pretty neat. Um, that's definitely something I will be doing during my next trip. These are the only things I bought for myself, but I also bought a necklace for a friend, a wallet for a friend, a, another wallet for my dad, another wallet for my mom, all of which I no longer have because I gave it to them already, <laughs> which is why I'm not able to um, show you. But one little tip I also want to tell you guys is that um, I think Central Pay is just absolutely amazing if you love shopping. All the stores there are just very well decorated. So besides the Chanel Central Pay, the Louis Vuitton Central Pay store is amazing too. The building also actually has two structure too. It's way bigger than the Chanel store. They have many, many items. The neat thing is that they have this garden area. So while your sales is processing your payment and doing your paperwork, you can hang out in the garden or even after your purchase, you could just lounge in the garden and they have free water, free coffee, and even free champagne. <laughs> so if you're there, definitely check it out. Last but not least, I would like to talk about this department store in Paris called Bon Marché. Um, I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly. I know most people opt for Galleria Lafayette when they're in Paris, but personally, I really, really prefer this over Galleria Lafayette for several reasons. Like Lafayette is just overcrowded and the interior looks a bit more run down. I think if I were to make a comparison, I would think that Lafayette is more like overcrowded Bloomingdale's versus Le Bon Marché would have been Barney's, kind of. I was able to get connected to a personal shopper at Le Bon Marché, so how it worked is he was able to prearrange certain items for me and my friend. Once I got to the department store, a personal shopper came to greet me, and um, like the department stores here, there's um, like stores within the department store. For each brand, they have their own little shop. So the cool thing is that you don't need to pay at each individual store. Uh, what you do is you just tell the sales associates that are working with this personal shopper. You don't take the stuff with you. you. Just create this receipt ticket and they will just give it to the personal shopper and she will have all the items ready in the VIP area. And once you're done shopping, you can just pay everything all together. Personal shopper was definitely nice, but I don't really think it's necessary. One thing that was really cool was the VIP area. Uh, she gave us this little tour and a little history about the department store. So the department store is actually the first department store in the world. So it has a very rich history. They converted the founder's office into like a fitting area for clients. So, so in the future, if I go, I could uh, prearrange a complimentary styling session with them. I have like a champagne bar inside. It was just a really nice area. If I had more time to shop, it would have definitely been a great experience. They do offer complimentary fitting service, I think only to certain tier of customer. I'm not really sure what the threshold is, but I think you could find that online. I will link uh, the information below. In the future, I'll definitely be visiting this department store over the Lafayette because I did went to the Lafayette and it was just overcrowded. There were just so many people. At Le Bon Marché, I was able to just shop around at ease. I didn't need to wait to go into any of the store. Not because of the personal shopper, it was just that it wasn't that crowded. All in all, I just really like this department store. The ambiance was really good. It wasn't overcrowded. It had pretty much all the brands that I wanted to see and there was an MS store right across the street. This would be my to-go choice if I were to shop at a department store in Paris. So this will be the end of my Paris shopping trip story and tips. Comment below if you have any questions. 
And if you like or find this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.